okay. That's the charm of it, <laughs> of the piano. Hey, I'm Laura Jansen, and I'm sitting here in Wolfgang's vault. The first song I'm going to play is Single Girls. Like my new hair I cut it when you weren't there And pieces of us everywhere Were falling down My bed is now a girl's bed Pink flowers under my head And pillows on your side instead of you Cause that's what single girls do oh, oh, don't think about you I'm reading books on meditation Praying for my heart's salvation Oh, I've got the motivation To be a free girl and I've gone drinking with the guy down the hall Put up a new color on my bare walls I'm so damn busy after all Cause that's what single girls do Oh, oh don't think about you is Wicked World. You say you like candy, well stick with me. I got some sugar up my sleeve. You like money, place your bets on me. These odds are going crazy. And don't be afraid of the big bad wolf. He's just a sheep underneath those teeth. And don't be she ain't so bad, she ain't no bitch I said, ooh, ooh it's a wicked, wicked world Yeah, I, 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 woo -hoo, ooh, it's a wicked world La, 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 ladies, if you feel me, holla Fellas, show us all the dollar Little Riding Hood is such a flirt She got Miss Muffet all up in her skirt And Hansel and Gretel never made it home They got some cooking to do with their own 
a wicked, wicked world. Yeah, I, 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 woo, it's a wicked world. Once I tried to be so good, all sweet and spice, like good girls should, but I. Somewhere chasing Jill. One, two, one, two, three, four. Ooh, ooh, it's a wicked, wicked world. Yeah, I, 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 woo, ooh, ooh, it's a wicked world. Uh, uh, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Giddy up, giddy up on your big white horse, even if your prince ain't there. Oh, I like forever after. Like every princess should But there's always another chapter And the apple sure tastes good woo it's a wicked, wicked world Yeah, I, 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 woo it's a wicked world Yeah, I, 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 woo it's a wicked world Yeah, I, 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 woo it's a wicked world Come to me. Give me some time to lift myself up. I have been down for the count and all my self.
thanks. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Get, grab my coffee. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Derek from Crowd Eddie Magazine, and I'm sitting here with Laura Jansen, who just wrapped up a great set for us, and she was nice enough to stick around and answer some of our questions. Um, so welcome. Thanks. And thanks. Uh, I guess we get started for those of people out there that are just discovering your material. If you could maybe give us a little background on how you came to came to music, where sure. when you started, or if you came from like maybe a musical family, or sure. a little background. I'm uh, half American, half Dutch, so I was kind of shuffled between Holland and America my whole life. And the constant in my life is always the piano in the house. Um, I've kind of been obsessed with piano since I was about three and really classically trained and um, wasn't good enough to be a classical piano player, but always loved music. My mom raised me on Queen and Brazilian folk music and a lot of vinyl and um, a lot of rock and roll in my house. So it was really encouraged. And um, I always played music, but never wrote. And I didn't come to writing until a couple years ago. Uh, started writing, um, moved out to Los Angeles, uh, became part of the Hotel Cafe community, which is a really special group of musicians out in right. LA, that cool. really inspiring place. And I've been in Europe for the past two years um, touring um, music and learning the ropes and you know, it's going pretty cool. it's going okay. Yeah, well, I, uh, so I assume me going back and forth and traveling a lot uh, through Europe when you were younger, has that kind of travel and that exposure to different music scenes influenced your sound at all? Yeah, absolutely. I just think it's influenced me as a human and um, it's made the world a really manageable place. You know, it's mm -hmm. not, it doesn't seem impossible to me to, 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 to do this for the rest of my life. I would like to do that. And yeah, I get inspired daily by, by the travel and um, there's such a different scene over there of music too that it seems to be really separate, the U.S. scene and the European scene. And um, it's really interesting. There's a lot of talent walking around over there, too. I'm kind of speaking of that, your album Bells uh, comes out in the States uh, on March 22nd. Yeah. Uh, be sure to check it out. Um, but it's been out for a couple of years, right, in the Netherlands? It's been out about a year and four months, something like that. It came out um, It came out over there, like, really unassumingly. <laughs> it was really, like, But a it's really, uh, from what I understand, it really caught on. Yeah, it did really well over there. Is it is weird? Amazing for you to go from having that kind of established um, fan base and then kind of starting from scratch over here. And you know, I mean, these songs have been with you for a while now and yeah. you're, people are hearing them here for the first time. Yeah. Is that, is that, what was that like for you? Or is, are, do you, do you come to your performances now in a different way than you did when you first started playing? Song Absolutely. Bells? Yeah. I mean, I think the, the year and a half of, of growth in Europe and how, you know, the experiences over there to me are much more crazy uh, and far scarier than the idea of starting over. I mean, I'm used to starting over and used to playing for smaller crowds. And what happened in Europe was kind of uh, was kind of a fairy tale year this year, um, and that's surreal to me. Um, so coming back to like a smaller venue and having to really work to convince five people to stay when they hear your first song, and um, I like that challenge. And the songs are still really fresh for me, and um, I love playing them. I'm really proud of them. So. Um, I'm just really looking forward to like you know finding a new audience here. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned the hotel cafe yeah. and kind of moving to LA. And um, I wonder, I mean, for people that aren't familiar with that scene and that venue and that whole community, if you could kind of let us know how you came to be involved sure. in that and yeah. what it's all about. It's this really tiny bar in Hollywood in an alley. There's no sign on the door. It holds about 200 people, and it's been around for about 15 years about 10 years as a singer-songwriter venue. It's one of the few places in LA where ego is not appreciated and competition is refreshing. frowned upon. It's very refreshing. <laughs> I don't think I would stay in LA if that place didn't exist. And I knew about it before I actually moved to, to LA um, because I was listening to music coming out of that venue. It's a little similar to what was happening in the 70s in New York City where artists you know, collaborated and used each other's talents instead of com competing for the spotlight. And um, it really, it became this really organic group of musicians that just grew and grew and grew. And then a couple of the people that were in that group became really successful. Um, it's bizarre that like Katy Perry started there, which is yeah. totally bizarre because she's she's a really quite an established songwriter before she was a, you know, like a pop star. She was a songwriter. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. And John Mayer started there and um, Jason Mraz and Sarah Bareilles and Ingrid Michaelson. And Joshua Radin, who you're Joshua Radin. touring with right now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Cool. And that's actually how we know each other is through that place. So when I moved to L.A., I would sit in the corner of the bar 
for about a year every night and just watch <laughs> people. Hoping. Well, and just realizing I needed to go back to the drawing board work, yeah. and like <laughs> raise the bar a little for myself. And after about a year, I got my first gig and, you know, 10 people showed up and that wasn't good. And, um, but slowly got like a monthly gig there and, um, got to know the, the community and, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, I owe everything to it. So did you start in LA and then go kind of go back to the Netherlands? And yeah. Release the rec- okay. Cool. Yeah. It was weird because I mean, it wasn't my plan to go, you know, go, go back home. Um, but through YouTube and the internet, my music, you know, caught on. caught on over there. And then I got a phone call and they said, can you come, you know, come take some meetings and play some shows. And, cool. and that was just, yeah, that kind of changed everything. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I'm also curious about your kind of songwriting process sure. and, um, wondering kind of if things that you pull from are autobiographical or more observational, um, like say a song which you played for us, sing girls, if mm-hmm. that's. Completely autobiographical. (laughs) I mean, like, embarrassingly so. I'm not yet the kind of writer that that can write about uh, the world outside of me. I'm still trying to figure out my own crap. (laughs) My own life is so, to me, it's so, you know, worth analyzing to learn from. And so, yeah, every song on my record is... um, is a chapter of my life and single girls. I wrote that literally like a week after the worst heartbreak, you know, that I've yet experienced. And, um, been there. Yeah. And I mean, it's interesting cause I just, I mean, I wasn't thinking about writing a song for, uh, a record. I was trying to get through a week. So it's more of a, it's a cathartic kind of thing. Totally. It was just a list of stuff I was doing to get through it. And, um, it's funny how universal those things ended up being because when I put the song out, the reaction I got from women and from men was, you know, like it didn't make me feel very special because everybody, <laughs> everybody goes through that. And yeah, but I mean, it's music like that that helps people get but through But that's it. what's so beautiful about yeah. music is like you can find that universal experience and it makes me feel less alone. And um, yeah, I mean, that's a song that, that came out pretty, pretty naturally and that they all are. They're about relationships and the process of breaking up and healing from it and and also, you know, what I'm trying to figure out as a human being. There's yeah. always another chapter, right? There's always, <laughs> always. Uh, but in addition to your own stuff, you, uh, I noticed that the, your cover of Kings of Leon, you, somebody else, have caught on pretty Yeah, big. that's been crazy. Is, uh, <laughs> it, is there a story nuts. behind how you got, how, what made you decide to cover that? Yeah. Or, oh, there, okay. I was Did in Holland, like my first radio show ever. I'd never done radio before, and I was invited to do this morning radio show sort of with the Howard Stern of Holland. Like the scariest, most intimidating guys guy DJ, and he um, he asks artists to to play one of their own songs as well as a song from the charts, and everything in the chart was like Euro dance, you know, <laughs> techno, bad, and there was this song, and I I loved this song. I mean, the Kings of Leon are a very talented group of guys, but this song in particular is like kind of a classic song already, and when you take out all the rock and roll, which is what I'm really good at doing, taking out the rock and roll. Um, it becomes this really anthemic song about um, isolation and uh, needing human contact. And and so I played it on the air, and the reaction was so strong that we p- kept playing it live. And then... Mix it on the record, right? Yeah. Cool. And then we went back in the studio, recorded it, and that song just took off. It sort of have, has its own life on the internet now. and Yeah, it's, it's a cover that's done the way a cover should be done, which is oh, kind of your thanks. own interpretation rather than just copying. So it's, it's, yeah, it's really it's, good. Yeah, it's a really different take on the song yeah. for sure. Yeah. And then I also would like to ask you about, because I found that your, your music videos are really cool, like very creative oh, and kind of capture this kind of whimsy and playfulness that's mm-hmm. a nice foil to the lyrics and the music. Good. Do you, I mean, what's the creative process like for your music videos? Well, that's the beauty of the internet. I met my director, Brooke Hansen, who's brilliant. Has she done all the, like the She's done ones? two of the three, yeah. yeah. Um, she contacted me on MySpace years ago and she was graduating from film school and, you know, wanted to do a graduate project and... I had no money and she had no money, but we had friends who were talented and we put together a video um, on, I think, you know, a thousand dollars or something, but just months of work and building our own sets and stop motion stuff. And she's just such a creative director and um, really gets what I'm trying to do. Um, So I'm really proud of her. I think she's sort of the brain behind it. Yeah, well, they're really cool. Yeah, Definitely check those out too. Yeah, she's great. We'll post a couple. Um, Cool. I guess... 
wrap things up, I'm curious, are you going to be at South by Southwest this year? Yeah, South by Southwest is going to be, this is the first year I'm doing it with a record. I'm promoting a record. So you've I've, been before. I've been before, but it's always been kind of a party and a reunion and seeing friends. And this is the first time I'm really like working it and uh, playing like nine shows or something crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll be yeah. down there. So we'll check cool. it out. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to get together. Well, great. Thanks for Thanks. stopping by. It was great. We're on uh, Laura Jansen. Check out the record Bells out on March 22nd and make sure to watch the rest of the session that we'll post for you. Um, until then, see ya.